Tonight, what do you get when you mix a tearful president, some Air Jordans, and Dothraki pickup lines? Tonight's episode, I'm Trevor Noah, and this is The Daily Show. January 6, 2016. From Comedy Central's World News Headquarters in New York, this is The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. I'm Trevor Noah. Our guest tonight, I'm really, really excited about this. You know how in, uh, in Game of Thrones, they make up all those languages, right? Well, uh, the guy we got on the show today, uh, he actually makes them up. Author of The Art of Language Invention, David J. Peterson is here, everybody. Yeah! Yeah! Ah! And what a day it's been. Did you see North Korea? They farted. Um... <laughs> Well, we don't know what it is, because they said there was a bomb. North Korea is like a, a hydrogen bomb. And then uh, the world is like, no, it's not a hydrogen bomb. And we don't, we don't know. That's the weird thing with North Korea. <laughs> it's almost like they're like a really spoiled brat in their room, and the rest of the world just has to guess, what are you doing in there? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm gonna check out. Just leave him. Just leave him. <laughs> He's just being a teenager. <laughs> Insane news. But in our main story, we talk about something we never get to talk about. Guns. Pointy, pointy, bang, bang sticks. <laughs> in 2014, the United States saw a huge number of reported gun deaths. 33,599, to be exact. To put that into perspective, that's the entire population of Monaco. <laughs> a place where people only die of gout and roulette injuries. <laughs> the point is... I don't even know what that injury is. I don't know, it's just the guy... I lost $10,000 on a guy who died on red. <laughs> the point is, despite the death toll, and even though 89% of Americans support universal background checks, not much progress has been made in the way of passing laws to restrict access to guns. And in fairness to American legislators, it's because they've been really busy loosening gun laws. <laughs> you see, you, you can't do two things at once. <laughs> now, every time President Obama has tried to enact gun control measures, He's seen his proposals disappear before his eyes, which I can only imagine must be really frustrating, uh, at times, even bewildering. Uh, the best way I can describe it is, um, is using this, this, this little uh, video over here. You see, <laughs> look at this raccoon and imagine that this raccoon is the president of the United States. <laughs> now, imagine the delicious cotton candy between his furry paws is the president's best efforts to pass common-sense gun regulations. And the water is the American political process. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. President. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Poor raccoon Obama. <laughs> you can almost see the confusion on his face. Like, I, uh, I don't know what, uh, what happened. I, uh, proposed the gun controls. I had it in my hand. Uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> So all of this is what brought us to the big news yesterday. President Obama announced that he was going to go around Congress and do something about gun violence with executive actions, which is great, because something will get done, finally. And also, because, uh, executive action sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does. It sounds like Obama's finishing move in the wrestling ring, you know? <laughs> it's time for the executive action! <laughs> and then he just pile drives Mitch McConnell through the Senate floor. <laughs> it's the executive action! <laughs> and what Obama said was so crazy, it ripped a hole in the sp time-space continuum. And it made people angry before he even said what he was gonna say. Republican uh, White House you... hopefuls condemned the president's he actions had... even before the details were released. This is a total ruse. This is classic Obama. It's not constitutional. His first impulse always is to take rights away from law-abiding citizens. Well, he can abuse his power all he wants. He has a phone and he has a pen, but if you live by the pen, you die by the pen. And my pen has got an eraser. <laughs> uh... I think the amazing pen you're describing is a pencil. <laughs> but, uh, but if you are looking for a new pen, Ted Cruz, then you've got to check out the great deals that they offer on the website Pen Island. Uh, you won't believe <laughs> what they've got there. Oh, and everyone else who is not Ted Cruz, please don't go to the website Pen Island. 
<laughs> no, it will crash your computer and destroy it forever. Do not go to that website. <laughs> Mr. Cruz, again, that website. <laughs> Penn Island. <laughs> now, the thing that amazes me about this whole situation is how all those people knew that they opposed Obama's gun control plans before they even heard them. They can see into the future, sort of like those precogs from Minority Reports. <laughs> I want to hear what Obama actually said. Now, I want to be absolutely clear at the start. I believe in the Second Amendment. It's there written on the paper. <laughs> it guarantees a right to bear arms. No matter how many times people try to twist my words around. I taught constitutional law. I know a little bit about this. <laughs> okay, well, a little bit cocky, but I mean, uh... <laughs> but cool, we get it, we get it. He knows the Second Amendment exists, and that's a good start for everyone, right? And Obama's speech wasn't just jokes. You know, if it was just jokes, that would be weird. Uh, the president also laid out his actual plans. Number one, anybody in the business of selling firearms must get a license and conduct background checks. Number two, we're going to do everything we can to ensure the smart and effective enforcement of gun safety laws that are already on the books. Number three, we're going to do more to help those suffering from mental illness. Number four, we're going to boost gun safety technology. Some uh, interesting ideas. And the final one, boosting gun safety technology. It's a great idea for the president, a horrible idea for a Call of Duty upgrade. <laughs> Yes, I just unlocked the safety technology upgrade! <laughs> two-week safety course. <laughs> All right, guys, see you in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> so, so the president is proposing some very, very basic ideas to curb gun violence. But for many, what was most notable about the president's speech wasn't so much what he said as how he said it. Our unalienable right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, those rights were stripped from college kids in Blacksburg in Santa Barbara, and from high schoolers at Columbine, and, and from first graders in Newtown. First graders. And from every family who, who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. See that thing you're feeling right now? That pain in your chest that comes from watching someone weep on national television? Because he knows that society can do better than to file the shooting of children under <laughs> happens. That feeling is how you know that you're human. No matter how opposed to Obama's policies some people may be, or how cynical their politics, they have to at least acknowledge and respect the raw authenticity of that emotion. Or so you would think. Where was the wiping away of tears and the emotion after, after the Paris attacks? He can't pull that kind of passion for anything but this, and I feel bad about those kids in Connecticut, but it's only about this that he gets so upset about and never about terror. He didn't cry, I don't think, after San Bernardino. Did he cry? Did he cry no. after that? No. I don't think he cried. He no. didn't cry after Paris. I would check that podium for, like, a raw onion or some no more <laughs> tears. I mean, I just... It's, it's wow. not really believable. Are you f***ing kidding me? <laughs> Shedding tears when you think of murdered children is not really believable? You know what, there is something here that's not really believable. The fact that the rest of us have to share the title of human being with you.